All right, guys, today we're going to take a look at another one of those difficult to find. It's one of those oddities from the American Lock product line. This is the Model 790. Actually, it's a series 790, and this thing is honking huge, just like the Model 748 that I picked, I guess, about a week ago. Again, I'm using the same lock for comparison as a 5200 that we all we all know exactly what that looks like. And adding it all up, it's probably about four times the size of this 5200, just massive. Two pounds, 4.2 ounces, or 1.28 kilograms. The odd thing about this one, look at all these sharp edges. And this is, I find surprising that they didn't chamfer this a little bit. I mean, it's not sharp, but these corners, I mean, if you drop that on the arch of your foot, you know, during the process of, you know, unlocking a door or something, that would really hurt. If you need to clear a bar, I mean, this, you put your pantyhose around that and you swing it over your head, that would be an ideal weapon for clearing out bars. But anyway, enough about that. A um, couple differences between this and the 748. It's just as massive, just as heavy, but obviously it's not shielded. Uh, the other thing comes into the core. It is a six-pin lock. I'm not real happy with the bidding, but this is a borrowed lock from a collector. And when you put it in there, it's not quite straight, almost, though. And you rotate it just a little over 90 degrees. Now, notice how easy that turned. Not spring-loaded. Like the 748 had a very strong spring that we had to overcome, making it kind of difficult to tension. This one, not so much. And then when you turn it, instead of shooting out like a Titan missile, like on the 748, this one just kind of falls out of there. I mean, no spring loading whatsoever. Doesn't make any difference. It's just interesting that they had, American had two different mechanisms. I don't know why they didn't just standardize, but it's not on me to question them. All right, let's see if we can tension this thing. I'm going to go ahead and pick it. That's the thin one. I think we'll try this guy. I like it. And I am going to use the same pick that I used the rat yoke deforest. All the way in, light tension, and let's see what we have. I really don't know if this has ever been modified. In three, little click. That was pin three again. That was pin two, pin one. Definitely some serrated. This is probably a stock lock. Okay, that was pin four. Okay, that was two clicks on pin two. That was pin three again. Another little click on him. That was pin two. I got a good fault set going. That's pin six. Got a click on him. And we got an open. There we go. All right, uh, let's cut it. Let's take a look at what we got. And maybe, depending on what we find, maybe I can modify this one. I do have permission. But first, let's take a look and see what we have inside of there. By the way, I knew what size this was because it's the same as the 748. So 532nd or 4 millimeter, either one. Same real heavy screw. So they do have some standardization, I guess. It's got the same standard armored uh, uh, cover and also an armored plate right here to restrict access and also to limit the rotation. Just pop that dude out and everything falls out. Interesting that there's no uh, anti-bypass wafer, but doesn't matter, we're picking today. Move that out of the way and get a pinning tray. All right, I do have a key, let's lock it back up. And I know the key works, so I'll just set them right there. Find a good follower, perfect. I do need to take that off first. Get your act together, Bill. Okay, we're all waiting for that gutting disaster or maybe a, a slip that draws blood. Come on. There we go. All right, 90 degrees. 
And let's see what American put in here. Okay, it doesn't look modified in any way yet. I do see some share rated there. And let's just dump these guys out. I got a feeling this, it is from a collector. So probably not modified at all. Okay, these are interestingly all steel pins. Which is not something you see very often. Come on. Yeah, these are all steel pins. So that's one concession to quality they made on this top end lock. No mods to the core. But every one of these are ser Oh no, I'm sorry. Number two is standard. Number three is standard. And all the rest of them are serrated. These guys are all steel. Pretty interesting. All right, let's see what we got in the Bible. Okay, now I'm seeing some standard pins. These are, I don't think that's a steel serrated pin. Number two. I'm going to check these. They have an off color to them. They're not brass. They may very well be steel as well. That's a nice deep cut on that one. All right, number four. There we go. Serrated spool. I think these might be steel guys. Again, another serrated spool. And the last one. Another serrated spool. And all stock springs. All right, let's find out. Let's take this guy. Let's grab a magnet. Yeah, definitely. These are all steel, guys. Really unusual. But at least you're, a lot of guys you'll put, put a blank key inside of the core and you turn it really tightly and then you basically move it in and out. What, you're, what those guys are doing is smoothing off the sharp edges on some of the serrations and serrated spools. These steel ones definitely prevent that. These are look like they're well made, nice and sharp, which would prevent that. And also these guys would dig right into the soft brass body of the Bible. I think we can still make some improvements to this guy though. So let's do that. Um, I do have permission to modify this. And since we already have some serrated spools, that's perfect for what I'd like to do here. I am going to undercut. I'll show you guys how to put undercutting inside of the core and hopefully inside of the Bible as well. You guys often accuse me of sounding like a dentist when I'm working. Well, guess what? We're going to be using this little guy to do that. And I'll show you how. Let me go ahead and get everything set up and see if we can make it happen. All right, guys, I really don't want to make any modifications to these pins. These are just beautiful pins. They're all steel. And uh, I'm just going to stay with them. But what I am going to do is do some, make some modifications to the body. Now, I'm only going to modify three of the chambers. Chambers four, five, and six. Because they have serrated spools. And what I'd really like to do is create something, some overhang, in the core and also in the Bible for them to get caught in. So I've got to undercut them. So what I'm going to do is take my Dremel and very carefully slide him inside of the hole and then go around and round undercut so that the wide part of that spool and those serrations can get caught up both in that groove that I'm going to cut and also in the new sharp edge that will be present on the top of the core here. I'm going to do that on all three of these. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the Bible. And since there's no opening on the top here, we actually have to go in from the bottom. And there's an easy way and a hard way. The easy way is to set the depth of your bit exactly the correct depth where you want it. So it slides in there exactly where you want it. And that way you, all you've got to do is turn on your Dremel and then move him back and forth. If you try to turn him on and then manipulate him in there, you're going to end up gouging up the entire, it'll grab and then really make a mess of things. So set the depth correctly, slide it in, and then turn on your Dremel. All 
All right, I think that'll do it. I've got some really nice undercuts on both sides, uh, four, five, and six. And I think when we have the serrated spool hanging in there, there's plenty of ledge for them to both grab under. ASA designed this a long time ago and it still works today. So those are perfect. I've also got undercuts on the last three chambers, four, five, and six on the Bible. So this is really going to be nasty. There's plenty of things for those serrated spools to get caught up in. For once, I don't mind using spools. I know they give a signal. They tell you exactly what kind of pins they are, and they're usually pretty easy to overcome, but not when you got two deep uh, caverns to try to pry them out of. Let me put this thing back together and see if we can't get it picked. Oh, by the way, I know I'm going to get a thousand questions. This little tool, Home Depot, they come two to a pack, and they're $8. They last forever. All right, let's see if it made any difference to picking resistance. Still works perfectly, still the same key, still the same tensioner, and also the same pick. I did take a break for lunch, because I got a feeling this is going to take a while. All right, same pick as still the force 15 thousandths. My rat yoke. All right, light tension, find a binder. Pin one. Got a nice little click, pin two, got a little click. Let me check one again. And they're all springy in the back. So somebody up front is not quite right. There he is, two. Okay, that was pin one, three. Kind of felt a very slight turn in the core. All right, things in the back are now bound. Let's see what we got here. Pin six, a tiny little click, and I got no feedback. So I don't know if he's caught in one of those grooves or if he's set. And that's the beauty of having grooves. Okay, that was pin five. I got a click and again, no counter rotation. So I don't know if he's or not. We're caught in one of the grooves. And everybody up front is still in their seat. Okay, that was four. Got two clicks out of him. But no feedback. No, no rotation to tell me I'm on a spool. Okay, that was three. Got a little click. I'm trying to force five and I'm in pretty good tension on it, but I'm getting no feedback. And I don't want to break my rat yoke, so I'm going to move on. All right, four is the only binder. I'm not really getting feedback, but he's my only choice. And I got a little click. 
Oh, I'm losing my tensioner there. Goodness. I'm glad I had lunch. Okay, that was click on pin one. And now in the back, everything is springy. All right, four is the only binder. I'm gonna give another click. He's still the only binder. About to lose my tensioner. Okay, I think I just overset four. I'm gonna have to take a bathroom break. Oh, thank God, there we go. Whew. Say, I'm gonna take a bathroom break and go make a reservation for dinner somewhere. This is gonna take a while, but there we go. Wow, I have to tell you, I didn't expect quite that level of resistance, and here's why. These last three pins, although we we kind of did a lot of work on them, see how low that they're cut? I wasn't sure we're going to be able to reach the, the gouged out areas with those uh, serrated spools, but we definitely did, especially on that last pin. High cut pins on the last position are always difficult to reach when you got some lows in the front, and this was really not a lot of different, not different. I really wish this had been reversed. In other words, those high cut ones in the back and those very low cut ones in the front, then we would have had a real challenge on this guy. Anyway, stop flapping your lips. Let's gut him and I will prove to you that all those pins are still there. Okay, get all this stuff out of here. Pinning tray up here. We'll need this guy. Lock him up, get the follower, take the follow the uh, clip off. This is the battle. Okay, see, oh, come on. You still see the undercuts in four, five, and six? There's your serrated. 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 Really? Where did he go? I think I made a mistake here, guys. One, two. There he is. That was the one in three. Sorry about that. And that series was in four. All right, now we're back on track. Survey to spool. And the last one, another serrated spool. And the same springs. All right, guys, there you go. Same pinning that came from the factory. The only difference is we did some undercutting in the last three chambers 
Bible and the last three chambers here. We did it with a $4 tool and it literally took, I think you witnessed most of it, up fewer than 10 minutes and it greatly increased the picking resistance of this massive American Series 790. Anyway guys, appreciate your time, stay safe, stay legal. Hold on, before you leave, click that subscribe button. And while you're there, click that notification bell as well. If you'd like to be a sponsor, click there. And for five bucks a month, you get all kinds of benefits. If that's not enough free stuff, hit the Lock Lab. We've got a self-paced lock picking course with over a dozen modules at the bottom of the page. Join the tribe. Subscribe.